Oh my gosh. I am loving that the chat, how was there an hour, an hour before it was starting? <laughs> there were a couple of people already in the chat just having a conversation. So when I went on like 20 minutes ahead of time, oh my gosh, there were people like full conversation. It was so cool. So welcome. I am thrilled to announce that my art desk setup arrived yesterday. I was told it was going to be divided in two deliveries. So I was not expecting to have my whole new layout going. So um, this is uh, the new stream I'm going to start doing on Fridays. It's the uh, feature uh, terrain feature Friday going on uh, featuring terrain as well as I'm going to mention a couple people in our world that I think you really do need to make sure that you go check out. You guys are like zing, zing, zing on the chat, and I'm loving this. Uh, so hello, everyone who has joined us so far. There are so many of you. I cannot go and like list everyone by name, but I see you. I saw you. I've been commenting as I can. Uh, so thank you for joining me. And I do want to show you the new layout because this is so much better than what I had going on before. Before, you're going to see like one side, of, one side of the screen is going to be what I had going on before. The other side is what I have going on now, and it has made a world of difference already. Like I'm excited that I can actually spread out. So if you look on the right hand side of the screen, that was my old layout. It was this old wonky little card table. It's actually starting to bow in the center. So everything was like sliding in. Then what I did is I went over to Amazon and I've bought two separate tables. The one in the back is called a pub height pub table essentially. So it's a little bit more narrow, but it's at the perfect height where I can put all of my electronics on top. And then the lower level is a cabinet height table. I'm giving you specific names so you know what's going on here. And so if you take a look, I now have all this room so that what looks like, well, it's fake marble. It's not real. So the fake marble is where I can do all of my terrain crafting and mini painting. And I have all this extra room now. I'm not like hunkered into a 12 by maybe 18 bit of space once I get everything set up. And the top level is where I'm strictly going to be keeping my electronics. So that way I can just put everything up there and keep it safe. So this is the new setup. I'm going to be taking a final shot after I'm done here so you can see how it looks with everything on top because I didn't have time to take a picture of my equipment and get it plugged into this. But that is the new table setup. Again, both of these tables are from Amazon. It was one of those things where um, thankfully my patrons helped me out with this one this month because I realized between the two tables together and shipping and tax, all that loveliness, well actually no, shipping was free, uh, but with tax, I realized that what my patrons helped out with this month meant that I could get this really awesome studio set up. And this is, this is one of those things where I'm like, oh my gosh, thank God. I didn't realize how cramped I was. I was, I was like super cramped in because it's one of those things where I think I was working like this. Um, the other cool thing is now as I can show you some of the train stuff that I want to make, so much looking forward to that. And today we're going to start off doing um, easy mushrooms for terrain. And this is one of those things I've been getting people saying like, hey, could you do some underdark? Hey, what about some interesting uh, cavern scatter? And since I'm doing stuff in the modern grave, <laughs> thank you, Cobalt Press. God, I love that. Um, I also got inspired by some of the things I've been reading about in the Tales of the Old Margrave book. So I was like, you know what? Let's do some forest mushroomy type of setup going. So you're also going to get to see how I work as I go. This isn't something where I've prepped it ahead of time and I've been working on it ahead of time. Um, I am going to make sure that I have a map. I have a new I have a new mat on order. So it'll be black and that'll be a little bit easier to see. Uh, but this will give you a sense of scale and everything and how I'm working with it. So to get started, I'm going to list through the supplies first so you can see what it is I'm going to be using. Oh my gosh. Hello, everybody jumping in. Ah, yay. Oh, I love seeing all these regular names and some new ones too, which is fantastic. Um, Oh my, I, I literally can't go through it. Let me try. All right, I'm starting from what I'm seeing. So we have Erasmus Expeditions, who's my buddy Jer on uh, the Ghost of Salt Marsh with the Dawnbringers, Todd Apotamus, Kentucky Fried Gamers, Kevin Hammond, Quinian Budget Crafts, uh, Alyssa, Scott, Jan, darling Jan, thank you for your help, uh, Craig, uh, the DM's lair. Hi! Uh, then, uh, Michael, RJ, uh, the Maharishi, Mac Attack, Achille, Bonjourno Soren. And RJ and Mega Moo. Hey, I know two months until uh, Mace. Hello, hello, hello. So if I missed your name, it's simply because you're not on my screen over there. It's not that I'm not saying hello to you. It's that I'm literally not seeing you right now. So yes, I am super excited. Let's go through the supplies you need. Now, whenever I work with supplies for terrain, I am very much the I like to make trash look pretty approach. So I will, mm, I hoard things. I save things because you never know. Someday they might come in handy. And they usually do. So what inspired this whole thing with the mushrooms is I have a kitten. Actually, she's a cat now, but she's the size of a kitten. Rory. Rory, we discovered, adores headphones. 
the cords to the headphones. I have literally gone through 20 headphones now because of her. Thankfully, I gave up and I just started buying the cheap ones from Dollar Tree because of how quickly she will like scout these things out and she's learning how to open things, which means I have a whole bunch of these things now just plunking around my house. And yes, I have been saving them because I've been looking like these could be something useful. So because I, D, who's D? I'm not D, I am B. <laughs> Hi, David. Um, so what I did is I saved these and I have, I got a lot, hold on. I've got, I've got these and I got these and these, I'm telling you, there, there is some, there is some weird chipmunk in me, obviously. And I've got a whole big old back. Like I said, she comes through my headphones like crazy. So I had all these laying around and I got to the point. I'm like, okay, I have enough to start making something. And, oh, I love doing Harley Quinn. Mr. J. So got those collected. And then I went into our tool zone in the basement and I pulled out some wooden dowels. And I realized by taking the caps from the earbuds and putting a dowel in, and these are the, what are the measure? these are the quarter inch dowels. Okay, you can get a whole big box from your local uh, hardware store. I got these from Home Depot. Uh, by doing that, you can insert these in, and hello, we've got ourselves easy to make mushrooms. So I'm gonna show you how I'm putting this all together and where my brain's going with this. Again, I have not set this up premeditated ahead of time. It's more, I get the supplies, I look at the supplies, the supplies talk to me. And I get going from there. So you're going to want a collection of just earbuds uh, from defunct headphones or whatever. Uh, and then you're also going to want to make sure you have your cutting mat, knives, obviously. This is a classic mini utility. I do like using this a lot better than the larger one. I just am able to handle it better. This one, if you haven't come across it yet, this is my Fisker's finger knife. And I love it. This gives you a lot of uh, manipulative control, which hopefully you'll be able to see as I work on it today. And what else do you need to make sure you have? Oh, I did grab, I didn't take them out yet. Doing shrooms with a friend. Hi, Jake. I mean, we can have fun, right? Um, I did grab some chopsticks just because I thought it'd be nice to have uh, some narrower bits of wood as well. I'm gonna see how that works with fitting into these because there are some earbuds that have like the smaller aspects to them. Oh my gosh, whoa, 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 this is too much fun. So I'm gonna do the assembly today so you can see what the scatter is gonna look like put together. The painting is probably gonna happen next week, is my guess. So we're gonna get started with this and other supplies you're gonna wanna make sure you have. Let me get this out of sight. Uh, your low temp hot glue gun. This is something you see in all of my craft tutorials. This little fellow has been very, hold on, I gotta get the right angle. This little fellow has been very, very good to me. I got this at Walmart for five bucks 15 years ago. Not even kidding. I like using low temp because it gives me some better control. I can manipulate it better. Not to say I don't have the super duper, oh my gosh, you burn off your fingers type of gun. I do have that and there are definitely times where I put that to use, but, but not today, not today. And then you're also gonna want, I've just grabbed some of our scrap insulation foam. You'll see why. So I've got some of this. I've also grabbed just the Dollar Tree foam core as well. Just dip a little bit more, yoink. Forgive me, I'm still getting this set up, still figured out. And I did make sure to secure my mat with some fun tack. So it's like, okay, my mark stays in place. Um, so this is just the foam core from Dollar Tree, the stuff that comes usually, I, have, I love this. I have so much space. I can actually whoo, put things to the side. Normally you'll see it like this in store. And the reason why many of us specify Dollar Tree is because it just, it peels away so nicely. So that is uh, the thing there. Oh my gosh. Context, during streams, we use, yes, we can have fun. <laughs> and finally, female man, there, I took, uh, you know when you get like bulk cereal boxes? It comes as corrugated cardboard, but it's thinner. It's kind of on par with pizza boxes. So I just took a big old box of cardboard from my Rice Krispies, not sponsored, and I'm gonna be using this as my base. Uh, so what will first help is I am going to cut this cardboard into some smaller bits. And then I wanna do some, she says some freeform. There's my pen. I'm like I need my ballpoint and ballpoint pen. Black ballpoint pen is the usual preferred one. So I'm just gonna go through and uh, ruler as well. If you wanna get exact, if you wanna set these more up as tiles, then you'll definitely want a ruler. I'm going scatter freeform here. Uh, Cause if many of you have probably started to notice, 
our terrain is not gridded. So we tend to be more freeform, which as a result, I tend to be less exact with my measurements. About an and almost an eyeball is kind of how I function. Let me guess, is there tape on here? Sometimes you'll find with these boxes, there's like little bits of tape left over. So I'm just sectioning this off right now. And if you're hearing all this noise, you know, microphone so you can hear me, but it's also on top of the workspace. But I like just getting this all pulled into separate sections and then you'll see what I'm gonna do here. So I wanna make some scatter that's a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make some that's a little bit smaller and it's all gonna have a very free form look to it. So I'm gonna start here with a smaller piece. And I definitely take advantage of just doing that. Whenever you cut, cut away from yourself, slow and steady hand, even pressure. Do not, safety first, do not cut this way because guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna go right into your side or something and uh, that's not good. Uh, Michael, if you wanna find that knife, the Fisker's knife and this knife, I have on my Amazon shop on my website, www.thecraftingmuse.com. I can put that in right now, actually. If you go here, you can actually uh, check out my Amazon shop. And if you purchase from there, it's one of those things where you actually help me out. I was able to get a few things this past month because of the commission that I get. And it's at no extra expense to you. So check that out. I like how YouTube highlighted my name. So you can check that out and you can um, purchase from there. You can even start with a link from there and then get other things you want to order. And everything you order will be considered um, as part of my link so it, it really does help so that's that's something if you want to look into it by all means but i do try to put my very favorite most used supplies and crafting tools into that shop i think i need to update with a couple new things that i've just come across so i'm going to start here with just a piece and how i'm envisioning this is i want to have a couple little smaller bits so we can kind of just pop them around i also want to get some that almost create like a half circle type of look so this is where my brain's going right now. So I'm first going to just freehand. There we go. I haven't crafted in a while. My ballpoint was running dry. So kind of think of like kidney beans is sort of how I'll go. So I'm just gonna take my pen and jog it around. Don't worry if you get wonky lines like that. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna make something like this. Again, free form. So that gives me two to work with. Go to another small bit. You're very welcome, Michael. Uh, you'd have a heart attack watching me cut stuff, says Queen. <laughs> hey, it's the mom and me. Be safe. Handle your knives and cutting equipment properly. Uh, says the mom who cut her finger cleaning the... I don't know if it's going to show up. No, it's actually going to heal. Um, I cut the boy's hair the day before school and I was cleaning the blades and I sliced right through my finger, drying the freaking blade. So yeah, I think I'm actually gonna do a little bit more narrow, kind of like oval shaped here. And again, this is being this is serving as scatter. So these are pieces you can take and add into different things. I'm seeing this as you can do this as scatter for cavern terrain. You can do it as scatter for you know deep, deep, dark, deep dungeon type of stuff where it's dank and whatever. Uh, forest terrain, if you want to add it into your forest areas, things like that. I'm always about uh, variety and being able to use these in more than just one spot because you put all this time into creating these things, but when they become one shot things, it gets to be tiring. You kind of run into burnout sometimes when you're racing and trying to get everything made up. And uh, yeah, so I try and make my terrain bits now. So a lot of it is functional and versatile. So right now I'm kind of doing these almost half moon shapes, but giving them a nice little rounded edge. Hello, Damien. So I'm gonna make a few of these. I think I'm gonna make up four in this sort of style because between the scatter and everything like that, that should give me what I'm looking for. And again, just sort of a little freehand it, doesn't matter. I'm gonna thicken that one just a little bit more. This is also where things can get dangerous, so it's not intentional, folks. So those are my four larger pieces again, so it's sort of creating a circle once you have them all butt up together. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start trimming these out. Now, I do have a nice strong pair of scissors and because I'm using this cereal cardboard, it's easier to trim these out. 
So what you'll find helps is just sort of trimming out your excess and then you can go in and cut as needed. So I'm going to go through and start cutting these up here. And don't forget, as I do these things, what I am going to do is consolidate the longer streams because this is being recorded as we're streaming. I will turn these into tutorials for people to watch later on. But if you have questions while I am proceeding, please let me know because I'm happy to answer questions. You're very much seeing me in my element of just creating. So if you want to know why I did, how I did, things like that, chat, use it, enjoy. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so cat so cut off a diagonal chunk of finger while teaching a safety. Oh God, the um, guillotine type of uh, paper cutters from teaching. I, oh, I did not want to use those things. I was terrified of that stuff. I was like, nope, nope, don't want, don't want. We finally got one that had a shield to it. So I'd start using that for, you know, cutting up half sheets for quizzes and whatnot. But yeah, those, those things leave terrifying things in my mind. Ah, why do the crafters in the guild rarely sculpt using clay? Uh, Brentley, I have used clay in the past. In the fact, a few people have. Uh, Scott even has that great cold porcelain video. So there's clay out there. You just have to go looking for it. Uh, a lot of it is also, we tend to stick towards supplies you can get easily and readily. At least I do, and Scotty does, uh, Bill as well. So, and well, really, we all do. All the guild masters do. Uh, so there are people using clay and whatnot. Uh, it's just a matter of catching it when it shows up. Uh, and that's another good answer, Jake. It's a, not all of us can sculpt. I mean, I've sculpted a mini. I have a Nightwalker. I have an unlisted video about the Nightwalker because YouTube doesn't like the name Nightwalker. <laughs> they think it means something else. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of reasons why certain things are used more often than not. Usually it's cost, usually it's availability, and good things like that. All right, so I'm just going through choppy choppy. And you'll see where this other foam and stuff is going to come in. So essentially I'm making eight of these pieces. Uh, when it comes to scatter, I find count wise anywhere between eight to 12 bits of things seems to work the best. So you have that variety. And it's honestly what gets used the most between just our generic terrain slabs and the scatter. That really makes it much easier. Uh, da, 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 da. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go back to my, my knife. I'm gonna go back to my knife and just do this. Notice I am cutting away from my body. I am not cutting toward. Safety, safety. Have I cut myself before? Yeah. Oh, MDF. Uh, it, again, that's um, looking at budgets, looking at what you have available. People have cardboard in their house, especially if they get things like cereal and whatnot. Uh, I honestly will just grab the stuff I know is around and that I've saved because it's so much easier that way. All right, I'm just going to take the knife. Since these are longer swaths, just sort of pull it away here. But yeah, um... There is a there is a group on Facebook. I forget their name. Uh, they were focused on sculpting. Knife. Um, what was it called? I forget. I do use green stuff all the time for modifying miniatures. I actually, I had a couple commissions where I did modifications on them. Modifications. Always good. And then once I get the excess pulled away, go in with my nice sharp scissors and trim. This sounds like an ad, a bad 80s, sit, not sitcom, but like show, this background music right now. <laughs> Just in case there are any carpenters here. Oh, that's a good one. Hello, McSonovitsky. I'm getting closer. I'm getting more into the pattern. You missed the supplies and your knife safety tips. That's what's missed so far. And uh, my new space, I showed off my new space. I have to get used because my one camera shifted. It's literally shifted six inches. So my eyes keep wanting to go here. My go here to you. Reach out and touch someone. <laughs> ah, having kids fill the crafting bins with material real quick. Yep. There's so much that I save. Oh, very cool, Kevin. That you're painting your first minis. What are you painting? 
Share with the class. What are you painting? I want to get this triangle off. There we go. But yeah, I am... I'm eager for this. This is also the first full day of school for the kids. So there's not so much the, oh my god. I need to make sure I'm done at a certain time. I'm not quite sure how long these are going to go. I think a lot of it's going to come to where I hit a stopping point And honestly, I just get um, tired of sitting. Or my voice goes or something like that. Well, hello there, David. So, yes, we have two left. Yes, one, two. Now, some of these pieces I will save because they're bigger chunks. The ones that are more, like, thinned out. Eh, I'm not going to bother. But these are definitely my most used tools. My cutting mat, my sharp scissors, my utility knife. There's so many different ways of doing things. <sighs> but yes, there's going to be some uh, fun stuff in store for the terrain builds. Things I'm hoping you get a kick out of using some different materials. Give you some out-of-the-box ideas. But today was, uh, let's ease into it. Because I haven't crafted, I honestly haven't crafted in June. I haven't done terrain since June. A uh, very real reason is because I was getting burned out. I love the crafting part. It's the video editing. I do not like. I do not like the at all. That's not fun for me. And what I'm hoping is that with these, if I'm smart, I can take both audio and video and just rip and pull together. We'll see. In theory. In theory, we'll see where it takes us. Always, always pull that blade back. Work equals no craft. That can do it too. Very much so, Damien. Hey, Unmade Gaming! How are you, buddy? And hello, Cody. Oh, look at you all jumping in. So, okay. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be talking about featuring others in our community. And Unmade Gaming, my dear friend Mike, he and I were at Keystone together on the panels about streaming. So for those of you who enjoy watching streams, you need to go check out Unmade Gaming on Twitch. He's got a Twitch channel. Uh, he has, what is it, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday's a question mark right now. Um, and Thursdays, I believe, he has games. Basically, he's got games going. So go over and check out his Twitch channel. Make sure you hit that heart at the very least and follow. Uh, great mix of games and themes to the games. A lot of the players that I know and admire are players on his channel. So big thumbs up. And he is on Instagram, which I'll show you quickly. I will show you the Instagram quickly once I can get my phone. Here we go. So he is on Instagram. Make sure you get on over there and follow him. It's Unmade Gaming, like what you see right now in the chat. So go follow him on Instagram. Go follow him over on Twitch. You won't be disappointed. Ta-da! Let's see here. What else we got going on here? Editing is editing is time consuming. Editing is God forbid your sound wasn't consistent or you forgot to do something and da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Alright, so I have my pieces all trimmed out. This is kind of where my brain was going. Sort of to create um fairy circle type stuff. But then it also gives you the freedom to permutate and move things around. Bring in your smaller bits of scatter. Oh, I did five of the smaller. Okay, so I'm working with nine pieces. And then you can just kind of do this so it's something that the players, they can weave through with their miniatures. I always try and get enough so it's like spread them out, do different layouts. And then it changes the look of things. So you could be they were traveling so far. Oop, new place. You still use the same stuff, but you put it into different areas and all of a sudden it gives it a very different effect. Um, oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> talking head stuff is so when when you hear talking head it's basically kind of like what I have going on um, I'm sort of hybriding the two uh, where it's just basically everyone in frame like here but then you also have here with the crafting stuff so I'm going to put these to the side now I am going to shift over to my scraps of foam do 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 actually it does take and there's roll for damage hello editing always takes longer than it is for the crafting so I'm kind of at the point I'm like, okay, with everything I have going on right now, I still want to do crafting, but I don't want to make myself nuts and get to where I was getting to by the end of June. I was honestly resenting my glue gun, the sight of it. It's like, I don't want to do this anymore. So what I'm going to do is this is the inch thick kind. I mean, you can see right here, inch is too thick. It's, it's more than I want to, uh, but I also want to kind of give some interest. So I'm just going to go through 
And with a long blade, I'm also not caring about the fact that there are ridges and bumps happening as I'm cutting because I want that. See, then you can tear it apart and you end up getting this really cool texture to it. So this is where um, beating up the foam is actually gonna work for you. Uh, I don't know why YouTube said you can't have that there, Jer. Show, show. <laughs> so I'm cutting this in half to thin it out. And you'll see, I'm not being exact here. That's for reasons. And you'll see why for reasons. Do the same thing with another big one. Ironically, these are sort of leftover pieces from um, when I did packs unplugged last year with the terrain craft. And I did just talk with um, the coordinator for that, sent in the official titles for my workshops and what I'll be doing. So that should um, kick in soon, I think. Oh, this one came out really well. See, look at all that fun little bumps and textures. Like I said, I don't want this to be a smooth cut. I want this to be a jagged bit going on here. Uh, da -da. Oh, gosh. Let me see here. I need to catch up, catch up, catch up. Uh, am I switching to crafting live streams? Yes, I'm going to do uh, crafting live streams, unmade gaming. Do I want to use this? Me. Uh, I am going to switch to doing live stream gaming. And then once a month or twice a month, depending on what I have cranking out, I am going to look into basically just having it where I'll kind of abridge them, like blend them all together because I do record these all. So just rip what I need from the videos and turn it into tutorials. And that should hopefully be a heck of a lot easier in some respects. Oh, I kind of like that break because here this gave it a nice little ridge as well. So yeah, this is where going gives you some more visual interest. So I'm going to do this a couple more times maybe. No, I'm going to work with what I have. I'm going to work with what I had. And now what I want to start doing is sort of taking things on the bias and sort of creating slopes. And you will see why in a minute, because I don't want this to be Notice I'm cutting away from me. This is not towards my body. It is away from. I'm going to leave that side a little bit higher. Just for some interest here. And then we have scraps. Now, with your scraps, again, like I said, I hoard a lot of stuff. You can always save these scraps, and they come in very handy for uh, rock formations and that type of thing. If you don't want to hang on to it, that's up to you, but it does help to sort of have a little Tupperware container. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hello, Pruden. Welcome. And hello, Mike. Uh, let's, oh, let's see. Am I? Oh, yeah, I'm still heading down. Uh, it's not until November. Hurricane has not had any effect on it whatsoever. And hello, Brent. How are you? So right now I'm just going through and I am, well, let me show you. You can see I went through and I beveled so it gets rid of the squared off look and then I'll address the whole well now there's some smooth parts there's other stuff we're going to be doing here same thing I kind of am looking at where the more visually interesting breaks are so because of that I want my deeper slope to be this way my new table still does wiggle a little bit I got to figure out how to get rid of that little wiggle we'll get there I'm just excited that I can actually my God, I can use my arms and I'm not hitting something or some piece of, or better yet, remember how I was hitting that camera all the time because it was stationed this way? The camera is stationed now so I can actually use my hands to talk. This little Italian is happy. All right, here we go. I don't want this to look too cornered off. Try to get my little curves. And you'll see where I'm going with this soon enough. A lot of it's just like freehand fun. So here we have another little bit. Do do do. Remember, this is natural stuff. So the more natural the lines and less plotted out, the better. Ah, I'm good. I'm caffeinated watching you. That does sound a little bit interesting there, Brent. <laughs> Although trust me, I've gotten far, far worse. 
I had someone who, uh, I don't know if you guys follow me on Twitter, I had someone who I had blocked on Twitter because he was a little bit too um, insistent and decided that since that happened, he needed to move over into YouTube and he started leaving comments, mind you, the same comment on a few different videos. Let's just say he can't do that anymore. So trust me, I've, I've, I've dealt with some creeps. <laughs> But I'll say like 98% of the time, we're totally good. <laughs> the imperfections are great to work with. I love those imperfections. In fact, sometimes I find it's those imperfections that when they come into play, when you're painting it up and everything, they really do make the piece. I might actually thin this guy down a little bit more, maybe. Do I want that high ridge? Can I thin it down safely is the question. Probably not. So let me do this. Oh, this was fun. Today we um, we had to get the water meter replaced for reasons. I don't know. We had a new water company. I guess they have to go through and uh, change it to their meters. Anyways, um, the guy arrived, and he actually arrived early, as I had requested they could, if they, if they could possibly do type of thing, because, you know, I got things to do. And it ended up where he was done down here and he started looking around and he's like these he goes what's all of this what's all this stuff and i explained to him how i do stuff with dungeons and dragons and i have a whole youtube channel and he was just he thought it was the coolest thing ever so he kind of took a look at things he goes that's really cool that's he goes wow that's so neat he goes that's cool that you get to be an artist and you get to play i'm like yeah it is pretty damn cool that i get to be an artist and i get to play <laughs> so that was fun uh, okay, so we're going to keep going, and yeah, we got some stuff. So where I am going with all of this is the bases that I made. I want to put these larger bits onto them, and I know they're not going to be a perfect fit right now. In fact, that wasn't even my intention. It's more, let's see how I can get these to sort of, where they're going to play nicely together. Oh, I like that. Okay, I like that. This is where I said it's, I kind of just let, the nature of things take over. So if I put you here, yeah, let me just play around a little bit more here. And I'm gonna go over to my hot glue gun in just a minute. Okay, so with that going on, that was probably loud. Yeah, I like that. All right, so I'm gonna place you there. This is where I'm gonna go to my low temp hot glue gun. If you use a high temp, remember that it can, if hot enough, it will melt your foam, which I know some people have very much learned the hard way. All right. Thanks for stopping by, Mike. It's good to see you. Again, go check out Unmade Gaming on Twitch as well as on Instagram, especially if you enjoy watching stream games. Lovely, lovely, loveliness. Okay. So this gives me a little bit of interest here, sort of like rock croppings coming out, which is kind of what I want to do here. So that's one. I'm going to play around this more. See you later. Absolutely. Sounds good. Uh, hold on. There was a question I missed. Uh, at least I thought there was. About the wire cutters. Oh, here we go. Uh, opinion on wire tables. Um, we have them. We also have a hand wire. I use the hand one more than the table itself. There are times though where the table gives you a little bit more precision that comes in extremely helpful. So if you want ex something that's extremely precise, oh, that's going to fit perfectly. If you want something that's more precise and whatnot, then do go check out getting your uh, Proxen. I do have a link to that on my Amazon shop. Uh, for those of you who may not have heard about that, I have had on my website, my Amazon shop, where if you purchase from that, I get a little, little commission, which helps me with buying supplies and whatnot. So feel free to check that one out. Okay, cool. So again, this is just giving me little bits because, you know, mushrooms, mushroom, mushroom. That's going to be happening. Get ready for it. That's going to be happening. You're going to fit here. Yeah. I don't think that one so much. This one probably. Oh, yeah, you'll fit right in there. Cool. Oh, wait, need more glue. Always keep your glue sticks handy, folks. Always, always. Oh, and yes, thank you, Jan. Jan is posting the Discord server where if you want to be able to get together and actually share pictures of your projects and things like that, that is a fantastic source 
for doing all of that. Ooh, I forgot about the cobwebbiness of hot glue. Always great. And some of the sticks, I swear, are worse than others. <laughs> Please hide ti a tiny snake somewhere in these. Oh, you want a snake? Snake! A snake! Well, that means I need to get a badger. Badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom. I, I, hey, I held out long. I held out a long time before that started up. So these just have the starts of these going on. <clears throat> and then, thinking about this, how am I going to do this one? Here's two of my, you get, no, 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 those are scatter bits. Right, let me keep going and whittling this down. Yeah, and all this is like process of elimination, playing around as you create, seeing what you can create from it. Yeah, the wisps. Although, if you can get the wisps working for you, they're great for things like spider webs. Um, I've done Spanish moss type stuff with it in the past. Heck, I've even like made things using hot glue where you just drizzle it into cold water. You don't put the hot glue gun into the water. Safety tip here, again. Yes, that needs to be said. <laughs> some things need some clarification. Rory, she's climbing in something. If you hear a big kathunk, it's Rory. All right, I'm going to... Do, do, do. I don't know if I like that. Been hanging around this damn corner. Oh, hello, Joaquin. Let me... YouTube is getting very, very touchy about what's getting shared here. But thank you, Joaquin. It would be an electrifying experience. Yeah, that absolutely would be a zing. I think what I'm going to do here is... See, you can't... I have a way of fixing this, folks, don't worry. But I do want to get one on this side. And then what I might do is... Hmm, she says. This might be actually where I'm going to. I'll show you what I mean by the rock formations. But when I'm creating things, this is what it's like for me behind the scenes. I just sit down and I start getting to use shocking questions. Hello, Caleb. They will upright explode a glass of water. Oh, jeez. That's not something I realized could be a thing. Good to know. Kind of loving the fact I can cut and while the table's wiggling, the cameras aren't all going wibble wobble. That was, that drove me nuts. No matter where I put it, just because of how small the table was. Okay, yeah. Get this guy on. And you'll see where I'm going with this and all the mushrooms in just a little bit. Oh my god, I'm caught again. So here's the fun bit. I'm going to take, so they kind of look like little jagged stones sticking up. I like broken bits. I will literally just take sort of jagged corner like bits and they become into, they become, they turn into sort of broken bits of stone as a result. So I'm just going through and I am. Can you see that? Look at that. <clears throat> that I don't miss. My God. No, no. The glue does not want to behave for me right now. So yeah, I'm just going through and it's creating a cluster of stones. Broken stones that the glue is pulling out of my hands because of the strands. So yeah, terrain making. Everyone asks what my most bit of terrain used is. It's definitely the trees, believe it or not. 
Oh, what are you saying here? Eventually everyone will join everything and we'll all unite into a crafter super organism. Oh, good God. Kind of like uh, Voltron. The Voltron of crafting. All right, so this will give you a better idea of what I mean. See, that starts turning into more broken up rocks, which is kind of fun to be able to add in and give it a different look. Hence why I am doing it. But yeah, so I have Mace coming up. That is in November. That's the next one. For those of you who missed the mini painting stream, I did discuss this. And then I have PAX Unplugged, which I very much cannot wait for. And oh, 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 before I forget, I have Easy Roller Dice. They are working with me for this awesome giveaway. So if you go into this, the description of this live stream, I have put the links both for the giveaway as well as a Kickstarter they are running uh, for these fantastic dice bags. Uh, they have these really cool different designs on them and they stand up and they do all this bit of loveliness. And so they reached out to me and I was more than happy to work with them and they decided to do a giveaway. So if you uh, go to the link for the giveaway, you can enter. I want to say there's a little bit more than 20 days left for that now. Uh, maybe 24, 24 days, I think. Don't quote me on that one. And the uh, Kickstarter itself, you have less than 20 or about 20 so definitely go check those and give them a look easy roller is a great great company lovely people and here you can see how it looks now that i've put in these scrap bits so it's not just these wads of foam on top so this gets me started with my bases and i am spider woman aren't i spider girl spider girl i don't know whatever all right so i'm going back into my scraps I just like to kind of chop and go. Ta-da! So what I'll do is I'm going to pull a couple of these together so you can see, and then I'm going to start adding in mushroom mushrooms because that's what I want to do. I have no rhyme or reason as to how I'm plonking these on besides I like how that looks. Curious question. When you see your subscribe... Yes, actually, I can see the demographic layout of where most of my subscribers are from. Uh, surprisingly, I have a good chunk. Hi. I have a very good chunk in Europe. Uh, I also have North America, a couple in South America, and a few in Russia. And then there's there's other countries, but the stats on them are so much smaller. But the, the main draws are those. But yeah, there is a way you can check that out, Joaquim. You can see the amount, yeah, but you don't see the individuals as to where everyone's from, no. But you can see your demographic layout uh, as well as, you know, my ratio in terms of men and women and all that grandiose stuff. So it's there. It's knowledge that I could look into and put to use should I want just for creating things, not for contacting you or anything like that. That would be creepy. Talk about creepy. Hi. I like how that's looking. So, yep, just take those scraps of a bit of foam and just keep, keep plugging them on and you'll get these fun little rock formations. Rock lobster. <laughs> Spider girl gives her a glue gun and in a swift whirl. <laughs> Thanks, Mia. <laughs> and hello. Oh, gosh. So we're getting these going. And let's see, do I want to do one more? No, I will push this stuff aside because I do want to show you how I'm going to start making the mushrooms. So we'll make the mushrooms. And I'm going to start putting them on these. What I can do for the rest of the day is just finish up creating these. But this gives you the idea of just taking some of that foam and just using varied bits and pieces will give you a far more interesting look of a rock formation. And again, on that nice, not serrated cardboard, corrugated cardboard uh, from a cereal box. So we're going to work with these two pieces. I'm going to tuck them right up there. And then we're going to go into these making of the mushrooms, mushrooms. I already have a few pulled together from using these wooden dowels. Hello from Sweden and Ontario. That is, let's do a roll call if you want to. Let's just, for the fun of it, if you want. I'm not saying give us all your details, please, including your email address and the last four digits of your credit card to find, uh, no. But uh, just let us know where you're from. I am from the Northeast area, New Jersey area. 
All right, now what I'm gonna do is I am going to, that's actually one of the smaller ones. So all you need to do is go into, there's like these little nubs inside. That's what locks onto the earbud normally, right there, okay? You take your dowel and then just wiggle it into that spot. It does help to flip this up while you're doing it, but then once you get that on, you have a little mushroom. Ohio, Montana, Iowa. Oh, very cool. Italy, yep, Italia. Louisiana, Manchester. I was in your stomping grounds in June, Michael. Missouri. Oh, this is fun, see? All over, all over. So I'm gonna go through and just start adding these. And then you're gonna see how, what I'm gonna do to attach these, because I was thinking, eh, Pacific Northwest. Very nice, Damien. Myrtle Beach. Yeah, I'm liking how quick and easy these go on. And if you wanna make these a little bit more narrow or slimmer stems, I'm gonna jump over to my chopsticks, which those you can get for free. Well, if you like to get Chinese food, those you can get for free. You could also just do um, cake dowels and things like that if you want to purchase. We have Texas, Utah, Earth. Earth. All right. Which Earth? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, they just pop on really well. And it's super duper easy and kind of fun. Like I said, I have saved so many of these things. It is laughable. Germany. Nice. Oh, no. Whoops. Missile misfire. Yeah, that can happen. That's an adventure. That is absolutely an adventure. Oh, this one's a little bit tighter. I mean, it's silicone, so it's pretty malleable. But you can see how these are starting to take shape. Come on. Oh, yeah, these are definitely your earth. Not Middle Earth? <laughs> oh, it happens, Caleb. It happens. Yeah, these are earbud cupboards, Aaron. You missed the uh, beginning where I was going through the list of what we're going to be using for this. And the fact I have a kitten who likes to eat the wires. So many, many earbuds have gone the way of the dodo. Thanks to Rory. <laughs> Mini jellyfish. I was thinking about that too, uh, Kevin. That was something where it's going to be, I need a bot, not a bottle, a bowl of cold water so I can make the tendrils. I did make a, my floomph. He's over there. But probably a similar approach to that. No, it's yours. So it's, it's okay. So it's Luke's earth. Luke has his own earth, people. Are you taking applications? <laughs> you gonna share? It's just yours completely. No, it's mine. All right, so these are on, and they're actually on pretty darn well, but what I am gonna do is just take my glue gun at the top and just sort of give it a very thin coating. This is where I like to use the nozzle, just to kind of blend things down a little bit. Now I do need to clean the nozzle of this because speaking of cats, cat hair so there we go just kind of put that there and because it's low temp I actually am able to manipulate a little bit here but that gives me my little secured on the top and honestly once these are on they are definitely on you have to pull uh, do I have a video of which of the flump. Um, well, I have the spiritual weapon video that shows you how I make things. Um, whoa, what was there? Oh, that shows you how I make things with the hot glue. I'm like I make things with that, 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 that. Uh, is Scotty here too? Did I miss Scotty? Scotty, if you're there, hello. I'm sorry I missed you. <laughs> Unless you're commenting, I don't really notice the names. So this gives us our collection of starting mushrooms. Now I am gonna go over to. 
Where'd it go? There it is. So I have my lovely... All right, don't be scared. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what I use for cutting a lot of wood. I'm not obsessed with them. So I'm going to go over to using my chopsticks just to kind of get some more slightly thinner, you can see, thinner stems. And then I'm just going to place it on top, aim down, and snip. Snip, snip, snip. What's sorry, but no. Oh. <laughs> False alarm. I need more. I need more. I need more of the mushroom caps. So yeah, I'm using the chopsticks again just to sort of vary the size of the stems like you'll see in nature. And once I get these guys prepped and pulled together, I will um, start adding them into... In you go. Behave. Why are you not... It's not playing nice. Oh, there we go. Getting serious now. Well, as serious as we possibly can get. I mean, we are talking about me. All right, so see, you get that going. And I'm actually going to kind of trim on an angle. Because that will help me place it on, guess what, an angle. Oh, it's only the DM layer. Well, it's not just only. Luke is quite an entertaining fellow to watch. Go check out his YouTube channel. I highly recommend. We were just watching him the other day. And it was... Uh, so it was where you're doing those uh, split shots of yourself as different players and everything and uh, beefing up your big baddie. I'm blanking completely on the actual title of the video. But it was an entertaining and... You get back here! <laughs> Runaway mushroom! All right, thank you, Hannah, Kevin, for stopping by. Good to see you here. So, yeah. Chopsticks will work, too. I am going to have to go back in and definitely make sure I get some hot glue on the top there, though. Uh, you could probably even do things... Uh, I wonder if super glue would work. No, because it's going to absorb into the wood. And again, I'm cutting it on a diagonal here just to kind of make it... So you'll see what happens. You'll see. They don't all have to be on a diagonal, but I am trying to get a few of them that way. Oh, you know what? I'm overthinking things. Let me get more of a straight cut. Oh, am I almost out of my little... Nope, there's a couple right in front of me. So come on, you. And by the way, none of these were used. I mean, if you're going to use used ones, clean them first. Do I even need to say that? <laughs> missile mushroom, right? Talking about misfired mushrooms. Or mis misfired missiles. The mushrooms became a misfire. All right. So chopsticks will work. If you have them handy, uh, you have the cake dowels, which you can find in pretty much any craft store. I know Michael's for sure has them. Well, I know where it went. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, so just be careful. They, um, they get some height. <laughs> oh, funny. Only, yeah, <laughs> Looks like what do you mean? I'm not just only. Rah, rah, rah. All right, this is getting a little bit thicker, which means they're snapping a little bit more. But look it, I have all these fun mushrooms now. I actually may have made more scatter than I need, or the bases that I have mushrooms for. So probably good that I'm starting to focus on just the two first, because I may have overestimated my supply. See, look at that, Luke. You've got your fan base. You're good, buddy. You're not just only. Never just an only. <laughs> All right. Uh, I also have Badger, Badger, Badger still going in my head. So if you see me like bobbing my head, Badger, 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 that's, that's what I'm doing. So we're almost done here with the mushrooms. Yeah, I do like being able to use the chopsticks so we have some narrower stems. Get these on there. But like I said, this is one of those things where... No! Now I'm going to sulk. Now I'm going to pout. They're getting away from me. I'm going to pout. Well, that's probably really loud when I plunk those down. Sorry. <laughs> getting used to the fact that my other surface also had a little bit of padding to it. This does not. 
So, oh, but yeah, we had the inadvertent uh, featuring of the DMs layer, which is not a bad thing. Not at all. Uh, the other person I wanted to feature today, she is another mini painter, and she's actually starting to do streams on Twitch, so I do recommend you go check her out. Let me just first get the... One moment, please. I need to find her also on Instagram. Another lovely individual. And she is in my crafting group, but it is Geek Girl Bookworm. She is another one who does really cool things with her minis and I get a big kick out of it. So I'm just kind of scrolling through her feed right now. Another one who brings color into how her minis look. So go check her out. Uh, check, take a look, find her on Twitch and take a look and find her here on Instagram. That's another person in our community that I absolutely cannot say enough. Please, please, please go sub and follow. Gotta learn the Mel. I'll do my own thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Never tell me what to do. I will I will go and do the opposite. And I wonder why my second child drives me insane. He's not like his mother at all. No. <laughs> Hello, Vincent. Nice to see you stop by. See, I don't like cutting in the shoebox stuff. I feel like I can't get the right angle sometimes. All right. So that gives... Oh, we have one more. We have one more. There's one more. There's one more left. And in we go. Give this one a little bit more height. Now the other two I can go fine. They didn't go too far. They're like literally three feet away from me on all sides. <laughs> oh, well, it's just me down here. So, <laughs> and honestly, the cats will probably find them and bring them back to me. At least Rory will. She's very good at playing fish. Okay, so this gives me my mushrooms. And this gives me my little bit of scatter. Oh, this will be fun. All right, so I'm going to go through and just quickly put some dollops of hot glue on top. Especially for the ones that have a little bit more space in between. And helping them cool down. It's nothing too technical. Ta-da! Slide on its side right there. I may even do that as I go around and put them in, I think. Oh, 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 I found another one. How is that I didn't catch all of these? There's three more. You know, I'll put them to the side. In case I need to make more, I'll put those to the side. Uh, you might reduce the misfire mushrooms if you flip the clippers with vegan. Remember what I just said? Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I find a certain way to hold the clippers is easier for me, quite frankly. So I understand what you're saying. But for me, if I make sure it's held down at a certain point, I can actually clench it. I have weaker wrists by nature of having overworked them. Uh, with crochet and stuff. So for me, sometimes the way I manipulate tools is different. Um, <laughs> like she uses clippers in her hand. All right, so I'm going to go through here. And no, 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 I want my pen. So the pen top I'm going to use to help to perforate. And I want to get a nice cluster of mushrooms up here. So I'm actually going to stab into the top here and make a hole. And that's going to help me start working the mushrooms in and also help me see how tall I want them to be. So that's actually pretty good. All right. So getting that going, I'm going to put some glue in and again, because this is low temp, it's not going to hurt it or melt it. And I'll put that one. I'm not going to push it down as deep because I do want it to have a little bit of height there. There we go. So that gives me my first mushroom in. And then I am just going to do a quick Quick little beat around. And there we go. We get mushroom number one on top. And then what you can do is instead of going straight in like I did before, is angle it in. I'm not going to give you an exact angle, but if you need to, you have 45, 35, 65. We just did 95, 90 degree. So, you know, choose your angles wisely if you want exact measurements. That's not me. So I'm going to angle this in and stabby stabby reason being i want to get these mushrooms also going in at different angles because if you look at mushrooms they don't all go nicely up all right i'm happy with that so again dial up a pot glue insert the dowel and you can vary it if you push it all the way down i'm actually going to go as far down as i can with that one yes i like that 
But now, as you can see, we're starting to create our mushroom cluster. <laughs> and the same thing over here, varying up the angle. This is one of the smaller ones, so I'm actually not even going to worry about test fitting so much as getting the glue in so I can push down just a little bit and get it to catch. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. And it caught quickly. So there we go with... Now, whenever you do clusters and stuff, it helps to work in odd numbers. Uh, three, five, seven. Seven is usually your capper, just for the aesthetic groupings. Um, all right, have fun making gumbo. <laughs> It's basically um, backseat driving, because like I said, this is how I process, and a lot of times I don't want to stop and think about stuff. So when you're back there going like, hey, you should do this, it's like, I'm driving. <laughs> Although you do know I will take into account suggestions. I mean, that's how we got the really cool paint job on Cthulhu on the inside. So it's not that I'm not hearing you, it's more the, let me think, <laughs> is what it boils down to. All right, so I'm going to leave it with three here. I think I'm going to have fun and put one in the middle of those crags. I think that would be a cool thing. And I'm actually going to use one of the smaller ones. And I'm actually going to use the pen just to sort of eke out an opening. And here's a little fellow. We'll use this little fellow. And I'm going to kind of angle that too. Yeah. Oh, I like that a lot. But I'm going to put the glue around the base of the mushroom, this go around, and get the glue to take there. Oops. Hold on. A little bit of glare on the top on this one. Forgot to do that part. Although, quite frankly, it's quite easy to go back in and just... Oh, this is fun. Yep, I'm liking this idea a lot. Like I said, I didn't even do a test run of this. This is more the, I think this is going to work. Let's give it a go. <laughs> is that a technical term? Always. Always a technical term. More like whatever comes to mind. There are some V-isms out there. Yeah, but you see now this is kind of getting us our mushrooms. All right, I'm going to go through and let me see. I'm going to leave this one open. Reason being, that means players can put their miniatures there as a means of getting their miniatures higher for combat or whatever, getting something that looks a little bit more vantage point mode. So I'm going to leave this as a flat base. And I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put a couple more, maybe, yeah, I think I'm going to put a couple mushrooms, three mushrooms over here on this side and get that in there. So let me get a smaller one going. And this one definitely has more of a jagged top, so I want to make sure I get the hot glue on top of that. <laughs> v knows Vincent. Yes, I do. Let's see what else. Anything else? Oh. Uh... Losing an eye on a viral stream. That's why I do cut down, because when it's cut down, it's more shooting out this way. It's not going up. And I'm going to put... This one's big enough. I'm just going to put the glue right in there. Yoink. Get that little thread off there. Yeah, this is fun. Look at that. We got our little mushrooms. Can you please forgive me? <laughs> oh dear. Are we quibbling in the chat? What happened? Does someone need to go on a timeout? I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna put this one over in here. So again, kind of the same thing. I'm just using the pen to sort of create a guide for it. Putting the hot glue down on top of it. Since this is an angle cut, I'm gonna use that angle cut to my advantage. There we go. And again, the slicing actions from the blade and everything, I've got these neat striations. I'm going to go in with a wire brush. But I don't like the fact that this is two. Two is going to bug me, so I do want a third. Mushroom, mushroom. Which one do I want? I think I'm going to do this little one. Yep, I'm going to do this little one. I actually am going to trim it down, though. There we go. Oop, loud kerplunk. I am going to need my pen again, though where I want to put that. There we go. There we go. So we have three and three with the one in between. But this gives you an idea of where I'm going with 
how this is getting built up. Do do do. Oh, with a messing up of the names. Potato, potato. No, I'm kidding. It's fine. <laughs> hey, mad dog. Thank you for jumping in and saying hi. All right, so we have the one that's going. I'm going to get this one as well. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a collection. This is where I'm playing around. I'm going to do a collection of three right here. Leave this more open again so that miniatures can go on there. And I might have like one sticking out somewhere else. So probably four on this one. And if anything, I now know that I need to save more of these earbuds. Because. <laughs> tribbles? What tribbles? The trouble with tribbles? That's actually a fun one. I enjoy that episode. <laughs> Quibble. Oh, I just knocked that one off on my own. I'll pick it up in a minute. All right, get this one going in. I'm gonna leave it a little bit higher up. I want some height for that guy. So yeah, we'll do the building today and then the painting up next week. And what I'll do on the in-between is I am going to give these a nice coating in a mix of Mod Podge pavement, not pure black, pavement from Apple Barrel and let that dry. And that way it gets us ready for painting next week. But I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Hold on, please. I am caught up in a long, long strand of hot glue. Well, hello, Game Trade Media. Nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by. This one, yeah, I'll put that one there. So again, pilot hole. Yeah, there we go. I like that. I like it. Do, do, do. Oh, that's a little bit more glue than I want on there. Nice thing about low temp is you can go in with your own hands, especially your fingernails if you got them. Kind of work with the excess that pops in. All right, so I've got that. Do I want to add? Let me think. Let me think. Yeah, I like the one there. So we'll put the one there. All right. Thank you, Skullig. Have a lovely day. And the others who have to get going, I'm seeing some good bars. Yes, go and do, Scott. Thank you for jumping in. It's going to be, you'd be amazed what Mod Podge can do. Especially this Ultra stuff. It really does help. There we go. Okay, so we have... The next cluster pulled together like that. Da, da, da. So right now we have these two bits pulled together. Like I said, I'll take, um, cause I don't have as many earbuds. So, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to forget the smaller bits of scatter. I'll make it so it can at least get a fairy circle going. So off camera, uh, after I'm done streaming, I'm going to get these finished up as well and set up kind of like what I have going here. And that'll give us four of the half or the quarter circle things to go. And we'll take it from there. So, uh, that was an, oh yes. So now I'm going to go over to my wire brush and I just want to add a little bit of fun texture to the stones, not the rolling stones, but the stones come out. Now we'll use the plastic one. <laughs> Hello, DM insomnia. Long time no see. Well, if you're sitting there manipulating them, yes, they're going to crack pretty easily, but you'd be amazed what happens as you start getting layers of paint. And again, Mod Podge really will make a difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here. This kind of helps also pull away the extra strands. I'm just going to pull down, give a little bit more texture here. At the same time, it pulls up those annoying bits of hot glue, but provides a little bit more texture along the way. That's why I was waiting, so I was not having to double back and add in more texture. Yep, there's a piece I can pull out. Do-do-do! 
So there we have, you can see through here, the texture that's collecting. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm sure you're thinking, well, what are you going to do here? You shall see. Oh, you shall see. Yeah, Mod Podge absolutely changes things. And I have a nice supply worth of it. Huh! Especially the Ultra. The Ultra is just incredible. That one I'm very, very happy with. Right, same thing, just going to pull through. There's no technical rhyme or reason. In fact, on the more open things, you can go in and bash the bristles into it so it gets more of a pockmarked stone. But by doing this, I'm pulling away the threading of the hot glue, which I want. Yeah, you can even mix it into your paints and everything, so you're not having to do multiple layers. Oh, there's a whole bunch right through here. I like that it gets caught up in the bristle too, so you can just pull it off and it's one nice clump as opposed to everywhere. Yeah, I really like the Ultra. It's, um, I use it to seal my minis. I actually added it into a self-made primer thing I did for the pig from Reaper Bones because I found that some of those Reaper miniatures are not holding paint like you need them to. And that helped big time. Okay, so these now both have their texture going and they're ready to go. And then, and then, I'm actually going to go around the edge now with my hot glue gun and fill in this corrugation spot. Just let me hold it upside down. But it helps to hold it upside down like that. This is so that when you go back in and paint, it doesn't have those pockmark holes open. So I'll put some hot glue on and then I'll just run the nozzle to smooth it out slightly. The other cool thing is that as you're doing this, you can even go back in and just put a very thin streak across the bottom and that can keep them from sliding. So if you want to make sure your scatter isn't scooting around on you, sometimes just a little bit of hot glue at the base can make the difference there. But yeah, I'm just going to go around. And if there's someone you feel that would be great to feature during these, please, by all means, email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. Uh, no, I'm not talking about the Reaper Bones Black. I'm talking about the miniatures from Reaper Bones for Kickstarter. Uh, a lot of the primers I had have not been sticking to some of them, not all of them. So I ended up concocting this other primer that worked really well. And it's because I put in that Mod Podge Ultra, honestly, that helped immensely. See, I'm liking this. I know if I'm staying over my green mat, I'm in the right spot. Huzzah! I'm telling you, this new desk setup, very happy camper. I'm going to let this dry uh, upside down-ish. Same thing. I'm just going to run bead of hot glue around here, smooth it out, and basically just hide some of that corrugated cardboard texture. Which some people, you know, if you skip this step, you can cheat it sometimes and put in a little bit more of a thick layer of paint around your edge. I just find this saves me the hassle of going to paint. You're like, oh, come on. I didn't think that was going to show, and guess what? It does. Oh, does it ever. I did wash them. I did absolutely wash them. I washed them with uh, Dawn to strip whatever was possibly left on them, and there's still a few that have... I almost think it's the plastic, excel plastic itself. Uh, something might have gone with the mixing of the particular resin. I don't know. But uh, the minis always get washed. Always, always. That's a given. I'll say it on my live stream of the miniature painting. They get washed and done, and my hands will get washed and done too to strip any oils I have on my hands off while I'm painting. Little prep work tip from my end. Okay, so that gets the glue around there. I'll be right back. I forgot to grab something, but it's literally right there. So I'm not going to be off the screen for like, you know, time me. What? Two seconds? Five seconds? One, two, three, four.
five. Okay, so like five. I'm going for my textured paint from Vallejo, which I want to put to use here as well. And this is going to go in the more open areas. This gives me a nice gravelly texture without having to get into... You can make it yourself if you want to. I just, these were sent to me. They're handy and I put them to use. So I like to show them. So I have this textured paint and it's got uh, pretty much, basically it's just sand in there. And I really like how it works. So I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna put this onto the exposed bits of cardboard, which also I like the look of. And, hmm. Oh, I forgot to load my terrain brushes. Hold on. Here we go. I don't use my miniature brushes for terrain. So, yeah, I, I'm Maharishi, I am pretty much convinced it's probably the, ter, the release agent, but like I said, I've painted a good number of them now and it hasn't been all of them. It's only been a few of them and the few that didn't work so well and it works, it pulls it together. So nothing wrong with having your own primer either that will work in a pinch. So I'm gonna take this, uh, again, it's the ground texture acrylic. They do come in different colors right now. I'm just using rough gray pumice. Not so much for the color, but just because it's there. Uh, but it does come in other colors. You can get uh, dark browns, you can get black. The black is awesome if you're doing pavement for more modern build terrain, especially with tr street details. And I am just adding this to where the exposed cardboard is still. And if you want to get it really textury, you can put it on like this and then use it to lift and pull up like little ridges and stuff if you want. But I'm a big fan of this textured paint for terrain purposes. You'll see me use it a lot. You've seen me use it in other videos too. But it's just a great way to sort of add a gritty soil look to your scatter and, scatter and terrain pieces. Yeah, and it goes quite a while. I mean, again, this is something I even used in um, my snow terrain build stuff and it's going strong. I think I have two thirds of a bottle left. So it's, a, it's another good product. I think, again, it's on my Amazon shop. At least it should be. It also helps just make quick work of it. It's not like I have to put the sand on, let it dry, paint it again. This is just one, two, and done. And it takes paint beautifully quite well, I will say. And there we go. So there is the one. Look at that. I'm going to just tuck this to the side because I have room now for the side. Uh, have I tried using tile grout? You probably could. I think someone actually has. I just... A lot of the times I'll be sent things, and as long as I have the supply at hand, I don't really go looking for other things. However, I will have a blast. Oh, where are you dangling from? I will have a blast going through hardware stores and just finding things that I want to put to use. Some people will actually go to the paint department because you'll have those sample jars, and you can buy those sample jars of paint, and people will use that for painting their terrain and stuff. It ends up being more cost effective depending on what you're doing. So that's something you can consider taking into account when you're looking for paint for when you're doing like large terrain pieces and everything like that. I definitely recommend looking into getting the uh... and they even sometimes will have like those oops -a daisy collections where it wasn't quite the right beige or whatever. So those are good sources. Convenience is very true. It definitely comes into play Quite frankly, sometimes that, that overrules a quick DIY mode because I may not have the time and I want to get it done. So that's another thing to take into account. But yeah. I grab what is handy and what is there. Okay. So now these both have that texture paint on them. I went for a slightly more smoothed out effect. I didn't give it too much of the spiky texture because if you do it too much, it can sometimes make it more difficult for miniature placement. But that, it's tippet so you can see. That's essentially giving me my scatter pieces and how I'm gonna go about this. So obviously we need this paint to dry, the textured paint to dry, which I'll make sure I have happen. 
And then I will show you next week how these look painted up with my primer, which is going to be that Mod Podge mixed with pavement that I love to do. And I'll get these other two bits finished up as well. So we have four of these quarter moon or quarter circle bits. So at least we can have those go around. I thought I had more of these earbuds to make use of. I didn't realize I had some, but I didn't quite have enough for as many pieces that it cut out. But if anything, now I know I need to keep collecting them still. I'm not going to encourage the kitten to keep eating them, but hey. So that is going to be it for this particular part of the live stream. Again, like I said before, this is going to be happening every Friday. Next week, we're going to look into the painting of the terrain. And then at some point, hopefully by the end of September, I will have a condensed tutorial for those who want to be able to watch a step-by-step -step of what's going on in terms of recreating this look without having to watch the whole live stream if they don't want to. Uh, but thank you so much, everyone, for coming out and joining me. I loved seeing everyone jumping in and saying hello. Have a fantastic weekend. Uh, for those of you who had the first week of school kick in, get some rest. For those of you who might be into fall sports, good luck to you. And as always, feel free to reach me on the flip side. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me here on YouTube as well. And that is about it for me. So I will see you next Friday, finishing up our fantastic mushroom mushrooms because you know mushrooms they're fun all right take care everyone bye bye